Maybe I just like had no patience during the month of May. Come on, people. Hey everybody, welcome to The Pine Cottage. My name is Nicole, and today we are going to be chatting about all the things that I was up to during the month of May. It is the first week of June, today is June 6th, and this was the first opportunity that I had to sneak in and chat with you. We have been having contractors in and out working on our basement, and we had a, um, a fire at our church, and so we have been just kind of, in a daze with everything that has to do with that. Our church is over a hundred years old and is a historical landmark here in our city. And um, it's just been a devastating tragedy. So we've just been navigating that. Just have been spending time with family and being outside and finishing up school and you know all the life things so i mentioned in my last video that i was going to make this a monthly thing where i came to chat with you once a month and um, that is going to continue through the summer i think by the end of summer our basement will be done and then things may change in the fall and fall is my favorite and i tend to get more cozy and do more knitting and reading and really snuggling in during those months i tend to be more active and outside and doing a lot of family things during the summer so it just makes more sense to slow down a little bit to enjoy those things right now the first thing that we're going to talk about today is knitting. And if you were here with me the last time, I was working on a pair of socks during the month of April. And I did finish them. These are those socks. This is a homespun house yarn in the colorway fern. And the heels, toes, and cuffs are from a mini from one of my sock set subscriptions. I don't know the name of the colorway, sorry. So these are finished and blocked, and they will be living in my drawer until the weather gets cool enough <laughs> to wear them. Um, I may be gifting them, I'm not sure. I'm just going to do like I did last year where I just knit a bunch of pairs of socks and put them in a drawer, and then when it got close to Christmas time, I went through and decided which ones I wanted to gift and which ones I wanted to keep. So I'm going to do the same this year. Once May started, I started on a new pair of socks and I decided that I wanted to work on some of the, sorry, my glasses have a glare. I'm just realizing that's probably really annoying for you. We have a window. Let me close it. Let me see if that'll help. I don't know if that's any better or not. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Oh, so I started a new pair of socks and I wanted to work through some of my commercial sock yarns and just some of the yarn from my stash, try to get some of that used up. I am continuing my sock subscriptions through the end of the year. I contemplated stopping them just because I feel like I'm accumulating a lot of yarn and I'm not really working through it fast enough, but I decided to just continue receiving them through the end of the year and then I don't know that I will sign up again next year. I don't think I will. Number one, I want to save some money. Number two, I want to use up what I have. So in the spirit of working for my stash, I am using Patton's Croy. Let me find the little label. This is Patton's Croy Sock Yarn in the colorway Midnight Orchid. And it is a self-striping yarn. And the heels, toes, and cuffs I'm using, also using Patton's Croy Yarn in the colorway Muslin. So this is the sock. This is one finished one, so it's a half finished object. And I'm not very far on the second one. 
So, you know, with self-striping yarn, you kind of have to unwind a little bit so that the, you know, beginning colors match. At least I do. Some people don't care if it matches, but it, I definitely do. So, yeah, working on that second one, and I did not finish it for the month of May, but that's okay. I'm all right with it. I'm just taking my, my time through summer. At the end of next week, we are leaving for vacation, so I know I will have a lot of time on vacation to just sit and relax and read and knit and just enjoy the quiet and relaxing time. So I will probably bring some socks with me on that trip. And I have a couple skeins that remind me of the ocean that I plan to bring to see if I can make some socks while I'm there. If you have been here for a while, you know that I'm still working on my dad's Christmas present. And I have gotten a little bit farther on his vest. So I've just been knitting away. It's all stockinette. Um, and I have to knit this for like 18 and a half inches. And I want to see how many inches I, I haven't looked, I haven't measured to see how far I've gotten. So from the cast on, I'm right now at 11 inches, but if I start at the stockinette, I'm at eight and a half. So that's about halfway. So um, I have to look at the pattern to see if I'm supposed to measure from the cast on edge or from the stockinette, but I feel like I got a good, a good chunk done and I may or may not take this with me on vacation. It's a little bit bulky, so I'll decide, I'll decide later. That's kind of all. I just pick up the socks every now and again. In the mornings when I'm not working, I tend to pick up the vest. Um, I did receive, I think I told you guys last time, my husband bought me a gift certificate or a gift card from Thread and Maple. And so I did receive my Notions pouch and, or page, my no Notions page. And I use it all the time. I just leave it out. It has um, a place for my scissors, a place for my um, stitch markers, uh, my needles. Then there's a little pocket here where I keep some more stitch markers, some hand balm, um, and what is this? Oh geez. Sorry, my phone's ringing. Hello? Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm like so overwhelmed today. The drywall guys were supposed to be here in the morning. They didn't show up for like almost two, they were two hours late. So I was all about to say, forget it, but I couldn't record this because I thought they were going to walk in at any moment. My son wanted to go bowling, so I was going to take him bowling, and as soon as we were, like, walking out the door to go bowling, they showed up, and it just threw my whole day off. I feel like the phone has not stopped ringing. Like, it's just, it's just a day. So, I'm sorry. What was I talking about? This Notions page. I love it. I use it all the time. Um, I keep my little measuring thing in here in this little pocket too. And I love how it just snaps right up and you can just throw it right into your project bag. And I feel like I did a, um, a video of what's in my knitting bag like over a year ago. And I had a little black like zipper, makeup zipper bag in my purse. And I feel like this is going to replace that because it just keeps it a little bit more organized than it all being thrown into a pouch. Um, it has, you know, more places for organizing things, which I like. So this it was a great gift. I really enjoy it. I don't know that I'll ever put it back in the binder, so that leaves space for one more page that I could probably buy. <laughs> okay, acquisitions. I think last time in my last video, I kept referring to the sock sets that I received for my subscription as May yarn, and it wasn't. It was the April yarn. So let me show you what the May yarn was. For my dad's sweater vest, I am using Knit Picks Swish DK in the colorway Indigo Heather. I'm sorry. I've talked about it so much. I just assume you guys know that by now, but there might be some new people here. So that is what I'm using for my dad's best. The month of May from Farmer's Daughter Fibers, she did another um, 
set where she did a 50 gram, a 50 gram, and then a mini skein. And this first one is in the colorway Finn Bell. No, Love Letters to Finn Bell. And this is like a creamy yellow with flecks of green. And then the second 50 gram is titled the same. And it is like a minty green. And then the mini is like this coppery orange. So all three together are like that, which I, I really like. Very nice neutrals. And then the Palmer Yarn Company for May is called Hoppy, which I don't know if this is in reference to a frog, but it is green, and green is my favorite. And the mini is just like a nice neutral cream ivory. I also um, wanted to support my friend Jeanette on Instagram who I initially met because she is a knitter but then she started really working on her watercolor painting and she is amazing and so I wanted to support her she opened an Etsy shop and my brother who passed away sent me bluebirds um, shortly after he passed in the biggest flock I had ever seen in my life. First, I had never really noticed blue jays, but when I first noticed one, I second guessed like, oh, is that him sending me that? And I was like, oh no, Nicole, you're crazy. And just as I thought that, a flock of blue jays flew over my house, followed my car all the way to work, and I thought, okay, I get it. It's you. Hi. <laughs> so Blue Jays have kind of been, and I know they're kind of mean. And, you know, if you follow my Instagram, you will know that the Blue Jays ate the baby Robin's eggs that I found in a nest in my garden. And I was so sad um, because they are known to be kind of mean. And I just think that now that it's been so many years since my brother's been gone, he no longer is sending the Blue Jays. They've just made a permanent home in my backyard. Um, and sometimes they are a little bit mean, but that is nature, right? So she painted this beautiful watercolor of this blue jay, and I just had to buy it. So I'm going to frame this and put it in my home. And I also bought a little sticker for my bullet journal because I just thought it was so sweet. And she was so kind to send me this iridescent sticker that she made of a mushroom. So if you are interested, I will put Jeanette's Etsy shop below. She is so talented and um, I am just honored to know her as my friend, my internet friend, and I can't wait to see what else she works up. It's not really knitting, but she is a knitting friend, so I figured I'd put it under the knitting section here. I want to do a giveaway because I just want to say thank you for sticking with me as I've transitioned to adding new content to this channel and then kind of backing off a little bit for the summer and just I feel like I've thrown a lot of changes at this channel and you guys have stuck around and supported me and I've been accumulating these gifts for prizes and I haven't had a giveaway in a while so I would like to choose two winners. Um, one winner is to receive a project bag, it's a sock bag, and then another winner is going to receive a sock set. So if you don't care which one you want to receive, you can put hashtag sock bag, like one word, um, and you can also put hashtag sock set, and I will draw your name will be included in both of those. If you want one over the other, then just choose either sock bag or sock set. The sock bag is by The Knitting Swan, and it is this sweet little sock bag with roses on it. It is drawstring at the top, and it is a very sturdy canvas, and it's just sweet and simple. 
for a nice um, sock knitting project. If you are interested in reading, receiving a sock set, this is back from 2023 May's Sock Squad um, from Farmer's Daughter Fibers colorway. This was Queen Anne's Lace. And this is a beautiful pink and purple set. Reminds me of spring flowers. If you are interested in receiving this sock set, please put hashtag sock set in, account, in a comment below. I will draw for the winner for that in the next video, which will come either at the end of June or the first week in July. I'm not sure which yet. It just depends on how my life goes. Moving on to reading. You guys, those of you who are reading along in our Pine Cottage book club, we read for the month of May the book James by Percival Everett. What did you guys think? I loved it. Loved it. So I, the previous month, had reread Huckleberry Finn, and the month before that I think I read The Adventures of Tom Sawyer just to refresh my memory. And I, you can um, watch my thoughts on all of that in a previous video, but... This book was fantastic. I read it um, pretty quickly over the course of a couple days. And what did you guys think of that twist at the end, you know? Should I say that on here? Do you guys want a spoiler? Maybe I shouldn't say that. Okay, I'm not going to I'm not I'm going to I'm going to edit that out. I'm not going to talk specifically about the twist in case some of you have not read the book, but it's, uh, I don't even know, I can't, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. It's just so good. It's so, so good. And at the end, I chatted a little bit in the, in the last video about how I was unsure how Percival Everett felt about Mark Twain, about how Mark Twain wrote about racism in a way that was satirical, that if you didn't know any better, you would have thought he was a racist, but in fact, he was writing in satire because racism is absurd and he does write in his Percival Everett does write in his acknowledgments he says finally a nod to Mark Twain his humor and humanity affected me long before I became a writer heaven for the climate hell for my long-awaited lunch with Mark Twain I just love that he acknowledged him and what an inspiration for what a creative way to be inspired to write a novel like this. Like, I just, I thought it was great. Fiction novels have become something in my library where I am carefully curating what I put on my shelves and what I keep on my shelves. When I was in my undergraduate studies, when I was studying creative writing and literature, I just kind of kept everything and read through everything. I was like ravenous to just read all the fiction I could take in. And I felt the need to kept to I felt the need to keep all of those books. And as I pursued minimalism more and more, I thought, you know, when people every time people would come over to my home, they would look on my shelves and they would you could see their the wheels turning like, oh, she has this book on her shelf. She must think this or she might believe this. And it's like you're judged by the books on your shelf. It's always a good opportunity to start conversation, I think, with people. But I also thought, you know, I really want to curate a little bit so that my shelves truly do reflect my opinions and thoughts. But also, and more importantly, I want to keep books on my shelf that inspire me and that I would choose to read again. I'm not going to have books on my shelf that are just going to sit there and collect dust and I'm never going to read them. I also keep a lot of books on my shelves that I want my children to read when they're older. So I keep a lot of books that that spoke to me at whatever age and that I hope will speak to my children. And I make notes in my books when I read so they can read my thoughts about whatever it is we're reading. So my library is definitely carefully curated when it comes to all genres, but fiction for sure. And so this one is one that I will keep and will read again. And I'm going to put it in there right next to The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn because it just fits seamlessly, I feel like, with the stories. And he did a fantastic job. 
So what are your thoughts about that? I wanted to add in here, because I think I forgot to do it last time, some of your comments from our April book club. I just wanted to keep that conversation going. So next time I'll share some of your comments about James. So if you have any thoughts that you would like to share, please put them in the comments below so that I can share them in the next video. But let me see what we chatted about last time. So they, these comments are in reference to the book Wave that we read in the month of April. I talk about my opinion and my reflection on the book um, in the video. I'll, I'll put it in the cards above. But here's what some of you had to say. So some of you mentioned that you chose not to read Wave because it was triggering for you. You either had a tragic loss or um, someone close to you was lost and um, passed away in a tragic way. So I completely understand that. And if I ever am choosing a book that you are like, mm -mm, no, I'm not reading that. I do not take offense. So don't worry about that at all. I totally get it. Casey Wagner said, I was excited to read Wave, have wanted to read it for a while. Unfortunately, although such an incredible tra tragedy, for some reason, I struggle to remain interested. Me too. It was okay. I'm almost finished with James. Found it kind of difficult to get into, but it gets very exciting and hard to put down. It's definitely a lot to process. Loving your book club. Thank you, Casey. I agree about Wave, and I talk about that in the last video. I just, I struggled with feeling like she was really connecting with us, and I think not to blame her. I mean, she went through this horrific tragedy, so I might talk about that, you know, extensively in the last video, but I agree with your assessment. Uh, Maureen says, I read about half of Wave. I decided to put it down. I also lost a brother and was feeling a few triggers. I felt bad about not finishing the book, but made the right decision. Good for you. These memoirs that are based in tragedy are difficult to read, and um, I totally get it, so no worries there. If you would like to leave a comment about James for the next video, please feel free and I will share some of your insights on the next video. So I really enjoyed it. Some, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'm choking. Um, some of the other books that I read during the month of May, sorry, my dog is barking. Will he ever stop? I don't know, turn off the lights and I'll blow. To the extreme, I rock a mic like a vandal, light up the stage and watch it jump like a candle. Dance. Anybody else? I say spade. Okay, so some of the other books that I read during the month of May, Scattered Minds, The Origins and Healing of Attention Deficit Disorder by Gabor Mate. You guys, I read one of his other books called Hold On To Your Kids or something like that. And it was a pretty good book. But this book made me so angry and I couldn't finish it. And maybe he like redeems himself in the end or I don't know. I didn't finish it because I was just so frustrated reading this book. Maybe I'm misunderstanding or I'm missing something or, you know, my ADD is not letting me really focus on what he's trying to say. But he basically is saying that attention deficit disorder occurs through your environment. And it's all the mother's fault. That's what, I, that's what I'm getting from this. That, okay, let me see. Let me see if I, I mean, I marked so many things. Let me see if I can find one. Environment has far greater impact on the structures and circuits of the human brain than was realized even a decade ago. It is what shapes the inherited genetic material. I believe it to be the decisive factor in determining whether the impairments of ADD will or will not appear in a child. I agree that environment has a huge impact on our brain and what genetic material is going to be sparked because of our environment. But do I believe that it is the decisive factor in determining whether the impairments of ADD are going to appear? Absolutely not. I know plenty of people who grow up in trauma that do not suffer from ADD. 
It says, of all environments, the one that most profoundly shapes the human personality is the invisible one, the emotional atmosphere in which the child lives during the critical early years of brain development. The invisible environment has little to do with parenting philosophies or parenting style. It's a matter of intangibles, foremost among them being the parents' relationship with each other and their emotional balance as individuals. So wouldn't that stand to reason that, you know, all parents who argue in front of their kids, their kids would have ADD, or parents who are divorced, who have, you know, had arguments and fights in front of their kids, those kids potentially, if their genetic makeup is such, then ADD would present. I, I just don't buy it. We're human beings. We're, we're very emotional beings, and we are going to have conflict, and we are going to have conflict resolution. And I am a firm believer in having conflict, conflicts and conflict resolution in front of your children in a calm way because it teaches them how to resolve conflict. It teaches them how to state your case and make an argument and stand up for yourself. I don't believe in screaming in front of your children or being, you know, violent in front of your children or, you know, I, I realize that every family is different and that in some situations, you know, that may not be the case where parents can do things calmly in front of their kids, but if what he's saying is true, that would mean that every kid that grew up in um, an atmosphere of domestic violence or anything like that would struggle with attention deficit disorder if they were genetically predisposed to. I just, I know so many people who have had wounding childhoods and traumatic experiences in their childhood that do not suffer from attention deficit disorder. and. To put all your eggs in one basket and say this is why it presents just seems too tidy and too convenient for me to accept that. Already at only a few months of age, an infant will register by facial expression his dejection at the mother's unconscious emotional withdrawal despite the mother's continued physical presence. The infant takes delight in mommy's attention, writes Stanley Greenspan, and knows when the source of delight is missing. If mom becomes preoccupied or distracted while playing with the baby, sadness or dismay settles in on the little face. Like, really? You're going to put all of that on a woman? Like, your child is struggling with their brain because you had a moment of sadness? I'm sorry. We are complex beings. Humans have an array of emotions, and we are not robots, and we are not made to be happy and pleasant all of the time. And it's important to teach your children that when unpleasant things happen or you have unpleasant feelings, how to overcome them. I just... I, I, this is laughable to me. And so I was reading this and I'm just, I just don't get it. Like I said, I stopped reading it because I was getting so frustrated. But I don't know. Maybe I need to keep reading. Maybe, maybe he's going to explain it to me. If a broken mother baby bond is the catalyst for children with ADD, why are there situations where children have ADD with a healthy mother baby bond because I feel like I had a great relationship and bond with my mother and I have ADD. My dad had a healthy, like I don't, the mother baby bond, like most of the people that I know that struggle with <laughs> attention deficit disorder have wonderful relationships with their parents. Um, obviously you can't remember your life when you were a baby, but I find it hard to believe that throughout history, there was a relationship where the mother wasn't under some kind of stress. I mean, think about it. Like watching movies, you see like during the, the time when, you know, people were traveling in covered wagons, like, that was stressful. You had to make all your food from scratch. You had to go to the bathroom in the tall grass where the rattlesnakes were. I mean, the, the wheels on your, on your covered wagon could break off at any moment. You could get, you know, attacked by, you know, thieves or bandits or whatever. Like, 
there was stressors everywhere. And you're telling me that that mother baby bond was healthy and there was no stress. And so that's why there was no 80. I, I don't know you guys, as you can see, I'm like trying to work through this. I'm trying to understand it, but I can't. So if you've read this book and you're like, no, Nicole, like you're totally missing the point. Let me know. Um, let me know if it's worth continuing because I don't want to. And I'm all, I'm here. I'm on page 119. So, I mean, I have like half of it to go, but I just couldn't. I couldn't. I said, no, I'm done. This was just a bad month, I think, for reading because the next book I picked up, I was in Target and I saw this book and it was on my list. I just collect books in my Amazon shopping cart and put them in my saved for later section. And then when I come across them at like a thrift store, I have price books, I buy them. But I did see this one for 30% off at Target. And so I bought it. This is Knife, Meditations After an Attempted Murder by Salman Rushdie. And I did not like this. And I'm sorry, Salman, because I mean, this happened to you. And I'm so sorry this happened to you and it, that you were attacked. And it, it's awful and I'm very sorry, but I didn't like his style of writing. I thought it was very dry. Um, I feel like he is a writer, but I just, I didn't connect with his writing. And I'm like over two here because I didn't connect with the author of Wave and I didn't connect with him. He very much gives you a lot of detail about his recovery, his physical recovery in the hospital. But I wanted more emotion and the same that I, the same complaint that I had with Wave. I want to feel what you're feeling. You know, in writing classes all the time, they say show, don't tell. And he wasn't showing me, he was telling me through this whole book and I was getting frustrated. Maybe I just like had no patience during the month of May because I was overstimulated and there was too much going on. But I was like, come on, people, show me some emotion. I just wanted to see some emotion and I wasn't getting any. But then I went to Cedar Point with my daughter and, you know, a bunch of 14 year olds, they were they were going with her small choir group. And the only adult that was going to be there was her choir director. And I thought that is not safe. So I bought a ticket and I rode up there and I was just going to sit in like the little old timey section on a rocking chair and knit and read like for the whole day while she walked around with her friends. But if she needed me, I was there. And at the last minute she was like, mom, can you walk around with us? Because um, if someone doesn't want to ride a ride, then they don't have to stand by their, themselves. And I thought, well, that is really mature. Absolutely, I will. So I didn't get a whole t a lot of time to read, but they all went on the same roller coaster at once and it was a long line and I was able to read this whole book. This is Foster by Claire Keegan. And I did read her books, <coughs> excuse me, I did read her book, Small Things Like These, in another video, um, I talk about it. This one was the one that everybody raves about, and I was very excited to read it. And it was just lovely. It was so lovely. This small book, this little novella, 92 pages long, is packed with emotion. Packed. And this is what I love. This is, I am a poet. I write short stories. I write essays. I love to pack a punch into a small amount of words. I feel like that is just candy. Like I just can't get enough of that. So when I read through a whole novel or a whole memoir or all these hundreds of pages and I don't feel anything, I'm like offended. <laughs> Like, you took up my time and did not make me feel. And that's why we read, right? We want to escape. We want to jump into somebody else's experience and be there with them. And if I can't feel that, I'm just very let down. This got me there, took me there, and set me back down in tears. Loved it in 92 pages. And that is great. I love that. I love that every time. So if you haven't read it, and I have a third one that I bought, so I have a little Claire Keegan collection going. So she, she's good. 
she is um, a new little jewel that I found. And I, she's been around a while. She's just new to me. Her books take place in rural Ireland. So just a little FYI. I think that was it. Just four. Okay, so for the month of June, we are reading, I just chose a beach read this month. I wanted something easy breezy, something light that that would be fun for summertime. It's called Bella Figura, and this is by Camlin Mohammedy. And this is, I received it in the mail and it rained, we had a storm. And so the book got wet and so the cover is damaged. But I don't know if you can tell, like there's a little bit of water damage here, but it's not ruined. But I'm missing the dust jacket, which is fine because I take them off anyway. I hate dust jackets. It's about um, Italian life and food and how I'll just read you some of the um, titles of like the different chapters. That'll give you an idea of what it's about. How to slow down, how to taste the sweetness of life, how to celebrate being a woman, how to take a lover, how to eat and not put on weight, how to lose your head, how to take pleasure in yourself, how style has nothing to do with money, how to never need a gym again, the power of studied nonchalance, how to find true love, how to be together. I have no idea how I'm going to like this book. If it is a little spicy or has some romance, I'm probably not going to like it a whole lot, but it just seemed fun and refreshing and something light to read like for a good beach read and since I'm going on vacation I chose that one and it had good reviews so we shall see. That is the book for June. I am going to be posting a poll on Instagram for our selections for July, August, September and I'm taking in some of your suggestions. So if you want to add last minute some of them here in the comment section please do because I will be posting those probably next week so we can start um, voting on them for July's pick. Even if we don't pick them all for the whole quarter, that's okay, but um, I want to get a couple couple voting polls up there for people so that we can choose one, at least get ready for July so everybody can grab it. So that's all I have for reading. For simple living, <laughs> it hasn't been so simple around here. My garden is looking great. I've gotten huge harvests of strawberries and I'm just collecting them in the freezer to make some strawberry preserves once the weather cools down a little bit. Um, my Everything is growing. My potatoes are growing, my onions, my um, tomato plants are getting taller. They're sprouting some flowers. My carrots are growing taller garlic. I'm going to be planting some here on the weekend and I have some big tall garlics that volunteered from last year. So the garden is getting bigger. My neighbors have so graciously offered to water for me when we're gone because I have not gotten my irrigation set up yet. The basement's coming along. The drywall is in and the drywall taper is coming on Saturday. So I'll show you guys a little clip of where we are with the basement right now. So you can see actual rooms now. And I've just been baking some bread. I baked some bread today for my coworkers and our family. And it's just been really great so far. I'm enjoying slowing down, taking my time, enjoying my family. My daughter graduated from eighth grade yesterday. So our summer has officially started. And I am so, so excited just to take it all in and enjoy it because time just flies by. So I hope you guys are able to do the same and I can't wait to meet up with you um, next month and hopefully I'll have a lot more to show you or at least a lot more to chat about. So happy knitting, happy reading, happy crafting, whatever it is you enjoy doing and thank you so much for being here and I will see you next time.